Greetings Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home. Some news in the body of Christ and announcements before we gather for worship. First, I invite all Trinity members to take a look at our main newsletter. In our main newsletter, we outline our current COVID precautions, which we continue to evaluate as changes and time goes on as people get vaccinated. So please take a look at your May newsletter. We also outline our hopes for worship during May. We hope to have in-person worship in our sanctuary three times during the month of May, on May 2nd, May 9th, and May 23rd. The other two Sundays in May, we are welcoming groups that would expand our numbers and also the need for social distancing. And so we will have those out at the fair stand where we can spread out a bit more. Please take a look at our newsletter, our worship schedule, and either join us in person or online, whatever works for you. Also note that we will be adding singing to our worship services at the end of service for our in-person worship services, and then singing throughout our outdoor worship services at the fair stand. So please join us for that if you wish. Also, some other news that I'd like to share. St. Philip the Deacon in Plymouth, Minnesota, is a congregation that is hosting a Faith and Life lecture series. On May 6, from 7 to 8, they are hosting a lecture called Healing the Wounds of Racism. We are going to stream that lecture into our sanctuary on May 6, from 7 to 8 p.m. It is also available online, and there is information about that in your May newsletter. Also, some news in the body of Christ. We rejoice with all those confirmands who were confirmed last weekend at our drive-in service. We give thanks for the mentors who made time in a difficult year to still learn together with their confirmation students. We give thanks for Lisa Kittleson and Alois Queensland and all those who fearlessly led them this year. Also, one other bit of news in the body of Christ. We remember the life of Donna Anderson, who passed last week and whose services were held this past Tuesday in Elmore. We realize the impact she has had on our community and at Trinity, and her life has been a gift. And so we give thanks to God that she rests in eternal life, and we continue to hold her family in prayer. I invite you to continue to pray for all those on Trinity's prayer list found in your main newsletter. Let us gather for worship. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. 
O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm is chapter 22, verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. I invite the kids and kids at heart to listen in close for today's children's message. I have some trees behind me. Trees are plants and they need some specific things to grow. Let's think about what do trees need to grow? They need soil. They need ground to be planted in. They need sunshine. There it is, sunshine. And they need water. Soil, sunshine, and water help trees to grow, help plants to grow. But there are some trees and some plants that need a little extra help. Sometimes they need to be trimmed. Parts of the branches need to be cut off so that the rest of the tree can grow even better. And that sounds kind of funny, right? That you need to cut the tree in order for it to grow even better. But when you cut the parts that are starting to die, when you cut those off, the rest of the tree can send all of its energy to the really healthy parts and they get even better. And they, so then the tree gets bigger and it gets healthier and it gets uh, more fruit on it if it's a fruit tree. 
And in our gospel today, we hear a story where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. So Jesus is a plant and we are a part of that plant with Jesus. And God is taking care of that plant. God is a gardener for us. And so uh, we get to grow in faith with Jesus and God helps us to do that. So let's think about what things we need to grow in faith. What do we need? We need our Bible. When we read the Bible, we hear God's word. We hear what God has to say to us and to our lives. And we hear that word in church. We can read the Bible at home. We hear the pastor preach on the word. And in the children's messages, we hear God's word. Okay, so we have the Bible and God's word. We need prayer, conversation with God. We need to keep talking to God, right? We need other people. We need people to be in faith community with, like at Trinity, the people at church. But this could also be your family and your friends, people to talk about God and about faith with. We need each other. We also need to love other people. We need to show care and compassion for our neighbors and help them when they are in need. We also need baptism, where you are marked with the cross of Christ forever. And we need Holy Communion, where Jesus feeds us. And those baptism and Holy Communion are ways that God shows us love and grace and forgiveness in ways that we can touch with the water on our head and the bread and wine that we eat and drink. And all of those things make up our lives of faith and help us to grow in our faith and to bear good fruit. We grow well and we bear good fruit and bearing good fruit looks like having love for other people and for yourself, knowing that God loves you and that you can then share that love with everyone that you meet. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for taking care of our vine that we are a part of with Jesus. Thank you for helping us to grow in faith and help us to love others as you have loved us. And all God's children said, Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My parents are gardeners. When I was little in our house in the country, they would take me out to the garden and show me all of the plants and teach me about how to care for them. I would help pull weeds and turn the soil, help water them when the soil was dry. And I learned how to tell when vegetables were ripe and ready to pick. And sometimes in the flower garden, I would sit with my mom as she patiently combed through her flowers, deadheading blooms that were dead and making way for new ones to bud. And I remember as my dad trimmed a bush, being very worried that the bush would die because he trimmed it down to almost nothing. And my parents explained to me that there are some plants that need to be trimmed and pruned in order for them to thrive through the next season. Year after year in the garden, I watched these plants budding and blooming, withering and fading, being trimmed back to return even bigger and brighter and more abundant than before. I saw the cycles of life, death, and resurrection in that garden. In our gospel text today, Jesus assures us that just like plants in a well-tended garden, we can thrive with the care of a master gardener. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. There is grace in the way that Christ abides with us. We abide in Christ because Christ abides in us. We are branches on the vine because the vine is already connected to us. There was nothing that we had to do to become a branch and there's nothing that we need to do to stay a branch because Christ the vine is already connected to us. Our identity as branches on that vine is about Christ's abiding with us. Christ remaining with us. Christ is actively with us just as we are with Christ. And it's not about what we do, but about what Christ is doing for us. Now, Christ is about the healthiest vine that we could possibly be attached to. And we have a master gardener. We have God, the vine grower, tending to our vine. And here's the thing about vines. They spread. And the bigger the vine gets, the harder it is to distinguish with our eyes one part of the vine from another. The vines become intricately woven and intertwined. And our identity is so tied up in Christ the vine that it is hard to distinguish branch from branch and even vine from the branch. The community of Christ is intertwined like branches on a massive vine. We are one with Christ. We are all part of the same plant and all coming from the same source of life. And in this vine together, we need each other to thrive. The health of one branch eventually affects the health of all of the branches. And it's a good thing that we have a really healthy vine to grow out of. And it is a good thing that we have a master gardener because branches on a vine cannot do their own trimming. We cannot trim ourselves. We cannot prune ourselves. And we, as branches, are not in charge of deciding who is or is not on the vine. We don't decide who is in or who is out. 
and we are not in charge of deciding who is or isn't worthy of being on this vine with us. We are not in charge. God is in charge. The master gardener is in charge. And the master gardener doesn't just throw branches out all willy-nilly because the master gardener is a really good pruner. God knows how to do good pruning. Now there are things in our lives as Christians that are life-giving, things that bear good fruit on this vine, like loving our neighbors, caring for our neighbors, striving for peace and justice. But there are also things that do not give us life, things that do not bear good fruit, that do need to be pruned and thrown in the compost. Things that result in us as branches treating other people, other branches as if they were less than, treating other people as if they were commodities to be controlled. Things like power, and greed, racism, prejudice, xenophobia, transphobia, these are all things that need to be pruned within us. And we cannot prune them by ourselves. We need the help of a master gardener. And thanks be to God, we have one. We have God, our master gardener, who is always with us. In our lives of faith, we experience God's love, grace, and forgiveness through the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. We receive them in tangible ways in the sacraments. In the waters of baptism, we die to ourselves and are raised to new life in Christ every single day. A constant cycle of death and resurrection. And in Holy Communion, we receive that love, grace, and forgiveness and are strengthened to go out and share that love, grace, and forgiveness with other people, with other parts of the vine. Our lives of faith are a constant cycle of death and resurrection, of pruning and trimming and of thriving with God. God is present with us in the sacraments and God is present with us in the word that we hear proclaimed. God is present with us in prayer and in our community and in good works. And all of these things, all of these parts of our lives of faith are done not out of obligation, but out of transformation. God's love changes us and inspires us and leads us to do these things. God prunes us so that we may be transformed and bear good fruit. And so I invite you to wonder with me today in our congregation, in our community, in our lives, where are we bearing good fruit? And what needs to be pruned? And what is our master gardener tending to in us right now? Thanks be to God, with the help of God, our master gardener, we can all bear good fruit. Amen.
Prayers of the People Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of the creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your Spirit especially with Anathasius, Bishop of Alexandria, and those we name before you. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
receive the blessing, and I invite you with each portion of the blessing, please respond with amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.